In this video, we will discuss Diffie Hellman key exchange. As we already discussed in other videos, there is a problem associated with symmetric encryption because you have to somehow send your decryption key to a party who is going to decrypt your message. So, let's say your Bob and then you have Alice receiving your message like this and message is sent and the message happens to be encrypted and Eve is actually listening right so before Alice is able to decrypt the message, Bob needs to send a key so that Alice can use the key to decrypt the message. So Eve is listening and she can intercept both, for example, the message and the key and then do the same thing what Alice is doing with the message and the key which is a very bad scenario so a very expensive solution to this problem is using asymmetric key encryption so what you can do is you exchange your symmetric key using asymmetric key encryption so first of all again the same picture I'll draw so you have Bob here and Alice listening and so since Alice is trying to receive a secret message from Bob Alice will in this case will send her public key to Bob and Bob will then use the public key to encrypt the symmetric key so encrypted key encrypted with the public key of Alice and then he will send it to Alice so now let's say Eve was also listening in this case and intercepted that encrypted key using Alice's public key Eve cannot really decrypt it because Eve doesn't have the private key of Alice so in this case interception doesn't work and once Alice receives that encrypted key Alice now uses her private key to decrypt that encrypted symmetric key so she now has the symmetric session key to communicate with Bob and Bob will now encrypt his message using that secret symmetric session key and then send it to so this is encrypted message send it to Alice and then since Alice already received the secret symmetric session key already she can decrypt Bob's message but this solution is kind of expensive because asymmetric key encryption is much more complicated than symmetric key encryption and you have to have this infrastructure established to be able to use asymmetric key encryption so a cheaper solution not using asymmetric key encryption is somehow exchanging keys without actually exchanging the keys themselves so this is what basically Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm does so somehow it magically allows you to exchange keys without actually exchanging the secret key itself especially in the context of symmetric key encryption so how do we then exchange keys without actually exchanging them so that's a good question to ask 
and Wikipedia actually has this very nice diagram showing how everything works in this Diffie-Hellman algorithm so what really happens is let's say Alice and Bob they want to exchange a secret common key and we can also think of it as exchanging a special paint color a secret paint color you want to exchange without really exposing what that color is so what Alice and Bob each does is they will pick a secret private color whatever that is so that is let's say orange in this case for Alice and then this is the color Bob chose so that's the private color so I label them PC private color and then once they do that they originally had this uh, base color which is yellow they all share so what can happen then is they will mix the base color and the private color and produce this intermediate color and Bob will do the same thing produce this intermediate color and then this intermediate color will be exchanged so what's going to happen is then once Alice receives the intermediate color from Bob Alice will actually mix that color with this secret color she originally picked the private color she originally picked here so mix it with her secret color and produce this final common secret color they want to exchange and then Bob will do the same thing he will receive Alice's uh, intermediate color and then mixes it with his private secret color this one and then produce this common secret color and they end up basically with the same color which is going to be their common secret so in the context of encryption this will be their common encryption key they can use to encrypt and decrypt so when you take a look at the composition of this color basically you have base color and this one also had see what well we started with is this right so this had the private color of what Bob right and then we mixed it with right the private color of Alice right so the composition is this when we take a look at for example Bob's color its composition what it consists of is also the same because you started here the base color and the private color so base color and then the private color of in this case Alice but Bob added his private color so private color of Bob so although the sequence of the color being added they're different right actually by the way this is uh, base color so it has to be B the composition of the color is pretty much the same as you can see so that's why you end up with the same color and have you ever actually exposed your secret color in this case while you're exchanging your intermediate colors the answer is no I mean you never disclosed your private color you never disclose your ultimate common secret color either so that's why you exchange it successfully your common secret color without actually exchanging the color itself and you can do the same thing in your encryption algorithm